Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. We are back working on the 32 Schroll Coupe project. And uh, the last time I got the front suspension all uh, put back together, new kingpin bushings, all that good stuff. Got our rusty rear rolled back underneath. And why did I do that? I was doing that because I wanted to get the rear radius rod situation figured out before we start like tearing into the rear and rip it all apart and everything. I want to get that all sorted out and at least, at the very least, tacked in place so it's going in the right direction. Uh, before we have it blasted so that uh, I kind of have peace of mind knowing that that's good and we can move on to some other parts of the project. So the problem with this was a couple things. Number one, uh, they had basically just punched holes in this angle iron cross member, uh, welded threaded rod to these, uh, these are front wishbones off a V8 early Ford straight axle car. Um, and they welded those in, left nuts on the front, and basically that was their uh, design for the rear wishbones or radius rods, which is, you know, links was not good uh, for a couple of reasons. But that obviously just with the way they had just a loose nut for it to float around, not good. Number two, uh, just for suspension geometry and design, that is just not a safe way to do it. Uh, there's a lot of discussion on the ham and some different uh, hot rod forums and, and fabrication forums where you can learn about uh, how the rear suspension works. You can also get an old book on, on, you know, not old, but you can get books on suspension geometry. You will learn that that is not good. It's actually like just twisting everything and something's going to break, whether it's the, the welds in the back or it's going to bend or break the radius rods or it was going to just bend the, um, this cross member here, which isn't good. You need something that's going to pivot so when you go on even, uneven ground, the rear suspension can kind of pivot around and move. So um, there's a couple ways you could do it. We could put like a rear um, hairpin type design that has tie rods on both sides and that will let everything kind of float around. That's a way that I've seen used in old race cars, old hot rods that were done back in the day. But I kind of want to leave this mess of stuff that's going on in the back there. I'm going to clean up the welds and, and um, just add some welds to it, but I want to do something up front here that's going to be a little bit better. So I saw a couple of designs over the years that I thought were neat where people basically reconnected the radius rods like a wishbone like the front suspension has where it can pivot on a ball and socket when it goes over uh, uneven ground or over bumps. And I thought it was kind of a neat solution. It's something you can do with old parts um, that where basically you, know, you could have found back in the day. So I went to the 39 Swamp Merc, scavenged some parts off of it. I just took the torch outside and uh, kind of in the vein of this, ve this vehicle we're working on, I just torched off some parts here. I torched off the, uh, the wishbone off of the car uh, because this has the larger wishbone ball on it than like a Model A or 32 Ford has on it. Uh, so we're gonna be using that. I also got off, I torched out roughly and then I kind of knocked the rivets out and got this down further. But I took this bottom plate off of the frame and this bottom plate has a socket on it for the other side of the wishbone ball to sit in. So what I'm gonna be doing is utilizing like this much of this where we're gonna cut it off and we're gonna kind of graft it into this rear angle iron cross member they had. And I think I can make something that kind of looks like it would have been done back in the day, uh, but is a little bit better. And then once we get that done, then we can kind of decide in a later video if we're gonna add like a pan hard bar or we're gonna add some stiffening to these radius rods. But for right now, I'm trying to get the suspension kind of rough design going in the right direction so we can get this rear blown apart and sent away to be blasted. So let's get started. We're gonna chop up some original parts and hopefully make something that uh, is functional and also looks period correct.
right, so I got my uh, old school period correct, if you'll call it that bracket, uh, all built up. Uh, gas welded everything as you noticed. Uh, like I mentioned in one of the other videos when I was doing the work underneath of the car, I want this car underneath to kind of look, you know, look like somebody really did do it uh, back in the day. So me doing nice TIG welds on this would have looked really out of place with everything else that I kind of already gas welded. So uh, I took this bracket and I basically uh, unbent the curve that was in it for the X member, made it flat here so that this uh, edge can actually weld to the top of the frame rail. Um, it still needs some some adjustment, if you will, with some heat as I'm, as I'm welding it in. So, um, and then I made some little side brackets here that just connect everything. Nothing fancy, just got some steel that was this, like 3 16 the same thickness, uh, roughly, and uh, welded that in, just, uh, just hammered and got it all welded in place. So now we have this like, Similar bracket to what's in the front. It has this cup in it for the um, for the rear, what will be the rear wishbone uh, ball and socket uh, set up there. Uh, I put a mark for my center line. So what I'm going to do is take it over the frame here. I mark that center line with the uh, with the laser, and I'm going to uh, hold this in place, get it tacked on the corners, then probably heat in the center and start tapping it around, and at least get it all tacked in place, and then we can start working with making our um, wishbone section connect to the uh, radius rods that are already on there. So good progress. Uh, I'm going to fire the torch up and get this uh, tacked in place. Hey guys, Mike here. Uh, this Sunday, January 31st, Matt is going to be going live from the shop for a live Sunday service, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, be sure to join in and ask all of your questions, uh, and he will be showing some updates on some of the projects throughout the shop. Also, this year for 2021, every month we are going to be going live the last Sunday of every month, so be sure to mark it on your calendars and join us on the last Sunday of every month of this year.
All right, so I got the uh, that bracket made, uh, our period, period correct, <laughs> bracket made and tack welded in place. Um, it, it is good for now until we can get the frame all taken apart and I can uh, get in there and flip the, the frame over to weld it a little better. I want to wait till I have better access. So this is the, I went ahead and cut off the two pieces that were going through the cross, uh, that cross member that they made. And it looks like it's basically just, they just cut off the end and, and welded a big square bolt. This might be uh, from the railroad, from the same place that they stole the uh, some of the other stuff for the suspension. I don't know, but uh, obviously that was uh, not good. So as soon as I cut that, I put some jack stands underneath of the uh, underneath of the radius rods because uh, I had a feeling that this thing had some pressure on it. I think when they put it together, uh, they kind of like forced it in a place and just welded stuff uh, because the rear cross member where the, the square bolt goes through the cross member, the back of the hole was kind of like uh, tweaked a little bit because the, uh, the spring was, the way everything was mounted, it was kind of like pushed back real hard and it was kind of messing that up. So as soon as I cut that, boom, it kind of like took the stress off of it and it is, uh, it, it's sitting a little more free now. Um, so one thing I just did a measurement on was measuring across, because I was curious if they had welded these radius rods at like pretty much the same angle, and uh, they definitely didn't. It's, uh, it's a little bit off on these. So what I'm planning to do, uh, rather than, again, I'm trying to, this is a roundabout way to do this. I know people will kind of, you know, talk down about the way I'm doing this, but I'm trying to retain the shittiness on this car a little bit, even though we're making it kind of nice. Uh, we're retaining some of the old school ways they did it. So I'm trying to leave some of that nonsense in the back and I'm just gonna like dress it up a little bit uh, with some welds and stuff. So what I was gonna do was kind of pie cut the wishbones right uh, in front of the shock area here and get them going to that, back to that wishbone uh, kind of design. So by doing that, by cutting it that way, that can make up for the angle that's off a little bit. Like this one is angled a little bit more than that one. So when I cut it, I can, I can slowly get it to come in and match up with the yoke that we've already got from the old one. And that yoke has the original kind of uh, Y, you know, the angles are set for that. So I'm gonna uh, measure off and try and cut at the same spot at the same place, same spot and the same amount on both of these until I can get them kind of going in and hitting about where we need them to, and then uh, then we can kind of figure out what's going on from there. All right, so I made a couple pie cuts in there and I uh, just opened them up slowly until I got the wishbone, uh, the radius rods, which were turning into a wishbone, uh, going in the right direction. And I basically have them to the point where they're, uh, with the cuts I made, they're pretty much lining up with, uh, with the existing uh, yoke of the wishbone here that we're gonna, we're gonna you know, we already have bolted in place. So what I'm gonna do is kind of like we did when we did this sub rail stuff and I was figuring out angles and things. Uh, it's kind of just a no brains kind of way to do it, which I don't have a lot of brains, um, is I'm gonna trace the line on this piece here, how we're going to cut these so that they, everything kind of lines up. I, I have a little bit of play, like this one I have, probably cut a little further than we need so we can actually pull it back out. It flexes like that. So we'll get these lined up and then I'm gonna take measurements from where we're cutting over to the frame, use my laser to make sure everything's straight. And then once we cut the uh, excess off of the pieces, then we can uh, fit everything back up. Um, and I'm going to probably, uh, I need to make something to actually stick inside of two of these for uh, safety. I'm not just going to butt weld them. I wanna put some kind of um, 
rot, solid bar stock or tubing or something sleeve on the inside uh, that we can put in there to make sure that it's extra strong. So uh, I'm going to work on getting this cut to, to size so that we're good there and we can get those uh, cuts I did here, um, get those tacked up here soon and then we can uh, start working on making this one piece again. So you can see I welded in those last couple shots, I welded a piece of tubing in here that is about the same thickness as what the wishbone is. So I, uh, those were, it was a perfect size where I could just tap it in there, uh, get it to fit, and then I drilled a bunch of holes for plug welds, plug welded the, uh, the tubing in there into this yoke. Now what I can do is fit this into the uh, existing wishbones, pull everything together, and then actually uh, fit this up underneath the car with our mount that we made, and we should be able to start tack welding and kind of welding this mess together. Um, you may notice in the last shot I was using the TIG instead of the torch. Uh, I ran out of gas, or actually oxygen, for my oxyacetylene torch. So we're gonna finish the project so I can get it done today uh, with the TIG welder and just get stuff tacked up, and then I'm gonna come back and finish weld the obvious stuff like the uh, the trans or I'm sorry the uh, the wishbone mount that we tacked up and some of that stuff using the the uh, the torch and this stuff here this is stuff that I'm going to weld and actually probably grind smooth so it's doesn't really matter either way but I want those brackets to definitely look like they were part of the car so I'm going to get this fitted up to the the existing wishbones get it all bolted up and we should be able to start kind of locking everything together.
All right, so I got the, some tack welds on the rear pie cut area where we, we got the radius rods you know, to bend in, and I did a little bit of welding on the front there, and everything's tacked or, or stitch welded enough that uh, it's good for uh, some mock-up like we're, we're still doing here. When we pull everything apart the next time, I will flip the rear up, weld all those seams, and then we'll also flip the frame over and we'll finish weld all that stuff, and it should be good to go. So. Um, Again, to, to reiterate why we were doing this, the way they had the suspension fixed in the front, it was essentially making the rear radius rods like sway bars, and when the suspension really went up on, on, you know, on one wheel or you hit a hard bump, it was just basically fixed front and rear, and it was like just twisting instead of actually like moving when it was uh, going up and down. And rather than build like a four bar, uh, a four link type suspension or something like that, that uh, would have looked odd underneath of this car that we're trying to keep like old school looking, um, I thought by using original parts like that and kind of mimicking the front, uh, ball and socket wishbone setup uh, was a good solution. Now, when we push down on the suspension or we push on one corner, uh, it, it can actually swivel at that ball uh, whatever direction it needs. So if we hit a pothole, uh, on this corner or this rear wheel drops down, it can not only swivel to the right, it can also swivel up or down. So by having that ball and socket, it's really, really good. Obviously, I'll be replacing the rubber that's in there, you know, before we finish the car, but uh, for right now, it's really, really good. So uh, I'm happy with how everything turned out. The only thing I may do is add some bracing off of that, uh, like, angle iron cross bracket, uh, cross member that they have in there, diagonally back, kind of like a K, like the the, uh, the front has here, just to give some extra uh, strength to it. I may do that, that'll help with any little bit of twisting or something like that. Um, so I just gotta add some bar stock or, or some other angle iron and it should look correct like it was done back in the day. So that's all I have for this one. Uh, this is a big project that I was dreading on this car and I think this is an okay solution. Uh, if I wasn't kind of, my hands weren't tied with how it was fixed in the rear and how everything was and I, I, and I was willing to cut everything apart, I could have probably done a much cleaner job, but I think this will work okay for what it is and uh, should function just fine for, for this car and it definitely looks the part. Thanks guys for following along. Hopefully you like everything that's going on with the Shrill Coupe. It's progressing pretty quickly. Uh, we may have a slight little delay with the next update because I gotta figure out what I'm doing with the engine trans situation and I'd really like to get going on that next. Um, so we will uh, we'll try and jump on that here real soon. Thanks guys, catch you later.